Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about nucleic acids and I am going to give you a complete information upon these nucleic acids and coming to the introduction part of this nucleic acids, it is a building blocks of living organisms and these nucleic acids are present in the nucleus. So uh, to know about the structure of the nucleus and the function of the nucleus, I already prepared a video upon this. The link will be given in the description box for you. And next, this nucleic acid, actually what is mean by this nucleic acid and mean what is the definition of this nucleic acid and normally nucleic acid is nothing but it is a it is a gene material which is present in a organism which mainly helps to transfer the genetic material from one generation to the another generation that's nothing but which mainly helps in the transformation of genetic material from the parent to the children so that's the definition of the nucleic acid and that is mean by definition that is mean by nucleic acid actually so by this definition which i have given now it explains that this nucleic acid consists of dna and rna because without dna there will be no transformation of genetic material from uh, mother to the mother to the children right that is from the parent to the children so, so this nucleic acid consists of dna and rna so this dna and rna which is present in this nucleic acid will get replicated and forms proteins that's nothing but it build proteins so coming to the abbreviation of this dna deoxyribose nucleic acid and rna means ribonucleic acid so why it is called as deoxyribose and why it is called as ribonucleic acid let us uh, let us know about it later so normally coming to the type of rna there are three types of rna mrna trna and rrna and even the types of this rna has been explained in my previous video the link will be given in the description box below you can if you are interested you can watch it so coming to the discovery of this nucleic acids so if you see here frederick mescher in 1869 he discovered this nucleic acid uh, in the presence of an ultra microscope so he discovered that these nucleic acids are present inside the nucleus but he didn't discover the name i mean he termed the nucleic acid as nucleon okay before before this nucleic acid uh, arrived he named this nucleic acid as nucleon later albert cosell in 1880s he know he, he came to know about the properties of the nucleic acids i mean the nucleon so he came to know that this nucleon will exhibit some acidic properties that's nothing but uh, it is it exhibits that acidic properties so based upon this uh, theory which was proposed by this albert cosell later richard altman in 1889 termed it as a nucleic acid because because the information which was given by the cosell uh, he says that this uh, nucleon exhibits acidic properties so as it exhibits acidic properties it is named as nucleic acid by richard altman in 1889 so coming to the later in 1953 watson and crick discovered the structure of the dna right so this is about the discovery based upon this nucleic acids so coming to the next point uh, based upon this better equipment which has been recently used it was also came to know that even the mitochondria chloroplast and the cells which doesn't consist of nucleic uh, nucleus also consists of nucleic acid it, it this is based upon the recent research i mean after the discovery of the structure of the dna and etc so based upon the better a better equipment better equipment is nothing but based upon the uh, using better uh, microscope it was came to know that the mitochondria chloroplast and the cells which doesn't consist of nucleus means like a uh, virus viruses and some of the bacteria which doesn't consist of nucleus uh, will consist of nucleic acids that's nothing but it also consists of dna and rna right so uh, if you see here why is the reason uh, normally i have said you that this nucleic acids will be present in the nucleus before only at the beginning region only right but here i am saying you it in, also in the cells which doesn't consist of nucleus also it consists of nucleic acid why i am going to say you the reason later so coming to the next so coming to the next point this dna and rna consists of chains of base pairs of nucleotides Achha, first, firstly you have to know what is meant by nucleotides so nucleotides are nothing but which consists of nitrogenous base phosphate group deoxyribose sugar or ribose sugar based upon the uh, dna and rna formation of the structure so if, if you want to define the nucleotide you can define like this nucleotide is the base pair which consists of uh, nitrogen base pairs phosphate group and deoxyribose sugar or oxyribose sugar so how this nucleotide structure will be uh, will be determined i'm going to say it now so i have said you that this nucleotide consists of nitrogenous bases right so there are five nitrogenous bases will be present they are adenine guanine thymine cytosine and uracil adenine will be denoted with a guanine will be denoted with g 
thymine will be denoted with T, cytosine with C, and uracil with U. And the structures of this, uh, all of this, uh, you know, nitrogenous base pairs, I already given in my previous video. The link will be given again in the description box. If you are interested, you can watch those structures so that you can easily understand uh, about the, uh, you know, about the more information of this uh, DNA as well as the RNA. So if you see here, this will be the structure of the DNA. I mean. Uh, because I have I didn't drawn here RNA because if you understand the DNA easily you can understand this RNA structure also so coming to the structure of the DNA so this will be the structure of the DNA nucleotide and if you see here uh, this is a nucleotide uh, which belongs to DNA how you can determine whether this nucleotide belong to DNA or RNA see here normally DNA consists of nucleotides A, G, T, C that's nothing but adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine but if you see in the case of RNA it consists of nucleotides like adenine, guanine, uracil. Here, thymine will be replaced with the uracil. Okay, remember here in the RNA, thymine will not be present, whereas if you see in the case of DNA, uracil will not be present. Okay, so this thymine will be replaced with the uracil in RNA and the cytosine will be remain as it is. So, this is the only thing which you have to remember how you can determine the structure of the DNA as well as the RNA. Okay, so remember the DNA consists of T, that's nothing but thymine, whereas if you see the case of RNA, uracil will be present instead of the thymine here instead of uracil thymine will be present so this is the only thing which you have to remember so how to determine the formula i mean how, how to determine the whether it is a dna as well as the rna so if you see here i have mentioned here deoxyribose sugar so deoxyribose sugar is nothing but dna and if it is oxyribose sugar it is called as rna okay remember this one so here this will be the uh, in this way you have to draw the structure this is just a, like a formula so that you can easily understand and you can know how to draw the uh, structure of DNA okay and uh, if you see here this is a phosphate group and this phosphate group is acidic in nature and make sure that this phosphate group and between this phosphate group and deoxyribose sugar covalent bond will be present covalent bond will be present as well as if you see in the case of this nitrogenous bases and deoxyribose sugar between this both covalent bond will be present again okay so the nitrogenous bases are nothing but this adenine guanine thymine cytosine and uracil so deoxyribose sugar I am going to explain you enough so phosphate groups are nothing but which mainly helps in the attachment of the uh, you know which, which mainly helps in the attachment of the for example if you see the case of ATP ADP and AMP and if you understand properly about the structures then you can understand what I have said you know so if you want to know the structures of ATP AMP and ADP the link will be given in the description box so that you can understand easily so now coming to the deoxyribose sugar as well as the ribose sugar structures so what I have said you know if the nucleotide structure consists of deoxyribose sugar it is called as DNA and if the nucleotide structure consists of ribose sugar it is called as RNA so here I have said you right deoxyribose if, if the nucleotide consists of deoxyribose sugar it is called as DNA and if it consists of oxyribose sugar it is called as RNA so how you can determine by it I am going to say it now so if you see here this will be the structure of deoxyribose sugar and if this will be and if you see here this is the OH group and this is the H group and the first thing which you have to remember is that it consists of only 5 carbons first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon and fifth carbon CH2OH here the carbon will be present right and it is called as fifth carbon and if you see here in the second carbon here at the at this position it consists of H group whereas if you see in the case of ribose sugar it consists of OH group at the second position of the carbon in this ribose sugar OH group will be present but if you see in the case of deoxyribose sugar H will be present so in this way you can determine uh, the structure of the deoxyribose sugar as well as the oxyribose sugar so what is the basic thing which you have to determine be, uh, the difference of this deoxyribose sugar and oxyribose sugar so if you see here uh, this deoxyribose sugar it consists of H at the second position of the carbon whereas if you see in the co a case of ribose sugar it consists of OH group at the second position of the carbon so in this way you can determine the deoxyribose sugar or else a ribose sugar so next so the DNA can be seen in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes I mean the DNA and RNA can be seen in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes so if here uh, you know that uh, the how you can determine the eukaryotes and prokaryotes based upon the nucleus that's nothing but in prokaryotes nucleus will be absent whereas if you see in the case of eukaryotes nucleus will be present but I have said you that this nucleic acid will be present only in the nucleus right but uh, if you see in the case of prokaryotes this Nucleic acid will be present at the cytoplasm region. That's something, but it will cover the whole body of the prokaryotes. It will be present at the whole region of the cell. Whereas if you see in the case of eukaryotes, it will be seen in the nucleus and in some cases in the recent research, it was also came to know that uh, the nucleic acid will be present in the mitochondria as well as in the chloroplast also. Right? So now, at the beginning of the video, I have said you that this DNA and RNA uh, will get replicated and 
it also helps in the formation of the proteins so the replication process i already explained in my previous video the link again will be given in the description box so people who are interested you can watch it so let us see how the proteins will be built from this rna so now let us see it so coming to the protein synthesis so the protein synthesis occurs from the double stranded dna template so if you see here the double stranded dna template it consists of 5 dash end and 3 dash end and it also consists of exons and introns so the orange color which i have which i have drawn here are called as exons so exon 1 exon 2 exon 3 and the green color one which i have drawn are known as introns intron 1 intron 2 and intro, intron 3 so here this uh, this formation of this protein synthesis is just a basic thing and again uh, the brief explanation will be given in my further videos i didn't explain it enough i will give you in in future videos but i'm not going to give it enough because this is just a basic thing which you have to remember how the proteins will be formed okay so this will be the structure of the dna uh, double stranded dna template that's nothing but it consists of exons as well as the introns that is nothing but uh, where the template will be started with the 5 dash end as well as the 3 dash end and it ends with 3 dash end i mean so now this double stranded dna template will undergo transcription and polyadenylation so what happens is that it forms mature mrna that's nothing but when this undergoes transcription these introns which i have drawn with green color will get removed so the what will be what will be uh, what will be left over here is nothing but exons so that exons will get conjoined with over each other and forms mature mrna and this mature mrna consists of only exons which i have said you because the introns will be removed by the transcription process in such a way that this a mature mrna will get exported to the cytoplasm and undergoes translation process so here transcription process has been completed and here translation process will get completed in such a way that it mainly forms the protein sequence that's nothing but we have we know that the amino acids the group of the amino acid will form a protein right and here the amino acid sequences will be present in such a way that it mainly forms a protein and now how you can determine this amino acid sequence uh, it there is a there is another mechanism for it i am going to explain you in my further videos so now this uh, protein amino acid sequence will undergo folding and or else it is also called as post transcriptional modification or else it is also called as subcellular localization and forms a protein like this i mean this will be the amino acid sequence so what i have said you just now i have said you that this amino acid sequence will get uh, come will get you know together will get conjoined together i mean undergoes folding in such a way that it mainly forms protein so it will be it will get folded like this post transcriptional modification is nothing but folding process like this it get folded and forms a protein so in this way the protein synthesis occurs by the DNA as well as the RNA. So now I'm going to give you some key sentences of these nucleic acids. So nucleic acids are macromolecules that store genetic information and enable protein production. Protein production is nothing but protein synthesis which I have just explained now. So nucleic acid includes DNA and RNA. These molecules are composed of long strands of nucleotides. Nucleotides are composed of nitrogenous base, a 5 carbon sugar and the phosphate group. DNA is composed of a phosphate deoxyribose sugar backbone and the nitrogenous bases called AGCT that's nothing but adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The RNA has ribose sugar and the nitrogenous bases are AGCU that's nothing but adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. So by this you can understand that the DNA and RNA there is a there is a small uh, difference here how you can find the differences of this DNA and RNA based upon the type of nucleotide in such a way that this DNA consists of thymine whereas if you see in the case of RNA it consists of uric, uracil I mean. So next DNA commonly exists as double stranded molecule with a twisted double helix shape. Double helix shape is nothing but like this. So if you see in the case of DNA, these nucleotides will get twisted over with each other in such a way that it mainly forms a double helix like structures. So here, uh, this uh, here between this, uh, between the nucleotides, what happens? Uh, this formation of the, uh, you know, twisting occurs in such a way that it mainly forms double helix shape like this. So here the nucleotides will be present like this. Okay. So the each of the nucleotide will get linked over with phosphodiester bonds like this. All of this blue color one which I have drawn are known as phosphodiester bonds. This is just a rough diagram. And yeah, even the structure of the DNA and RNA, I also explained it. And the link will be given in the description box. So if you are interested, you can watch this DNA and RNA structure. So uh, based upon this uh, nucleic acids, it is important to know the structure of the DNA and RNA. So please watch that video so that you can understand the structures of DNA and RNA and what are the nucleotides which will be composed in this DNA and RNA. Okay. So this is about the nucleic acid students. Hope you would, hope you people would like this video and like my explanation. So if you like this video and if you like my explanation, just press the like button. And if you like this video, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.